last year I played a series of matches and I lost horribly and I just realized my level wasn't what it used to be. It was honestly a wake up call and I had a feeling that deep down inside I needed to prove myself that I could still excel at tennis. My game although was like nowhere near where I wanted it to be and I needed a way to improve. So I ended up stumbling upon three key elements that completely transformed my game. And these discoveries were like finding a missing puzzle piece. My journey was filled with a lot of setbacks though, and my game sucked initially as I faced numerous technical and training issues. But these were the moments when I, if I doubted if I could really pull all of this off and actually achieve my goals in tennis. But after applying the three elements that I discovered, it led to a 180 degree turn in my game. And I actually went from 2,800 in the country to top 20 in the adult open rankings in the US, only in 2024. And I ended up playing the best and looking and feeling tennis of my life. And through these discoveries of these three elements, I actually found a way more efficient way to become a better tennis player. And this transformation that changed my game and validated my approach to the way I wanted to improve my game offers a path as well for others to achieve similar success. So if you're struggling with inconsistent performance, lack of power, and staying relaxed during matches, trust me, you're not alone. I faced the exact same challenges and then it only changed once I discovered these three elements that turned my game completely around. So these are the newest techniques that only a few people really know about. They're easy for anyone to learn without increasing the number of practice hours and they've worked for the students, all the students I've worked with, even ones who've only been playing tennis for a year and a half. And the best part is, it can change your game in literally just one week. So after watching this video, you'll understand the three key fundamentals to elevate your tennis game, leading to consistent, powerful, and relaxed play. So how does that sound? Also, how do I know this works? Well, I can tell you that I've experienced firsthand and I've seen that dramatic results in my game and in other people's games and just like you like i said i was very frustrated with my inconsistent game and it was only after i implemented these things that everything about my game and my results really changed i mean i went from losing like 13 matches in a row to like winning 13 matches in a row and winning like four tournaments in a row so like i'm telling you these make a difference now look if you're not serious about improving your game or not really willing to try these new techniques in general this video is probably not for you Okay, so you can just go ahead and click off. But if you are down to try something new, then keep watching. But before you keep watching, I need you to understand this before I tell you what the three fundamentals are to transforming the game. There are multiple ways to play tennis. And for some, it might be swinging through the ball, it might be loading power in the legs, and pushing hard to generate more power. And for others, it's playing smooth and effortless tennis and using their hips and natural muscle elasticity to create that nice, sexy, whippy shot. And you know what? These fundamentals that I'm about to tell you are going to give you the effortless, smooth, and whipping looking strokes. So if that's what you want and you're willing to put the work in to develop these fundamentals in your game, then you're in luck because your journey ahead is going to be incredible because I've done it and it's really life-changing. So the first question I have for you is this. Have you ever felt like your swing is all over the place and wondered how some people seem to swing perfectly in a very smooth way every single time, a la Federer, right? Well, your swing path is extremely important to achieving a consistent swing. And yet most people have no clue what the correct path is to swing their racket. And no, I'm not talking about low to high, all right? And just to confirm what I've seen in person about people not knowing what the right swing path is, I've searched online to find out what people are talking about when you search swing path, and no one ever mentions how to do it the way I'm about to tell you. If you look at players with incredible swings like Federer, Nadal, Alcaraz, you'll notice they aren't really swinging through the ball, they're not really swinging through the ball, okay? Instead, they're swinging out and away to, uh, from the body, out and away from the body. And often I tell my players to swing across the ball. So you're not trying to hit the ball, you're actually trying to go across the ball, right? By swinging in this direction, you'll notice the chest and the hips freeze or like stall out their rotation at contact. Shortly after contact, the rotation will continue though, okay? But the chest and the hips will stall out. That's how you know you're really stretching out that way. So if you notice that your chest and hips are still rotating through contact, you're probably still swinging forward rather than away from the body. 
and across the ball, hence your chest will really never stop rotating in contact. Now, why is the swing pass so important for consistency? Well, the swing path ensures that your racket moves to the correct plane, allowing you to make contact with the ball at the optimal angle. This is going to lead to a lot more consistent shots as it reduces the chance of miss hits. Plus, you're going to have a reliable way how to swing the racket every single time. So just having that consistency is going to make a massive difference. Now, have you ever seen players who seem to hit the ball effortlessly with incredible power? Now imagine a spring being compressed and then released, right? That's the kind of energy you can harness for your tennis shots. And yeah, there are multiple ways to generate power, whether it's just pulling your arm or pushing and loading with the legs. And the, but really the most versatile and long lasting way I discovered to generate power that has immensely changed my game is through what I like to call an elastic based swing. This takes advantage of your muscles natural elasticity through the stretch shortening cycle. Okay, so I'll go into further detail on this in a future video, but the sensation you need, you need to feel is a constant pulling and stretching that starts with your hips and pulling your shoulder, then your arm, and then your racket stretching back due to the separation that's occurring between all these different parts. Now the reason this creates so much power, even though it doesn't seem like you're doing as much, is because initially after the muscle stretches, the muscle can contract 50% harder. And you can go look this up right now. I'll actually link the source in the description. So you can literally increase the power in your swing by 50% just by stretching your muscle right before the hit. However, if you don't stretch the muscle in the right way, you can actually lose power, which is a big problem that I see people do when they first switch over to the elastic base swing, right? And I'm gonna talk about how to avoid that in a future video so just make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that vital error that most people are making when they first switch to this new type of swing so how can i generate even more power without extra effort using an elastic based swing well by focusing on your body mechanics and utilizing the stretch shortening cycle of your muscles you can create more power the more stretch you create the more potential energy you store meaning the more kinetic energy you can create in other words, more stretch can help you hit a bigger ball. <laughs> Very simple. More stretch, bigger ball. Now, what muscles are, do you need to strengthen to improve your elastic base swing? Well, to improve your elastic base swing and get more power and more stretch, you'll really want to develop strong core muscles over everything else. This will allow you to twist and create more hip shoulder separation. Okay. This obviously is different than pushing and loading with the legs. You're gonna have to really develop strong legs with this, a strong core, because you're really twisting and separating. Now, without this third fundamental, the other two points that I've just made will not be nearly as lethal or achievable. And even though I had changed my swing path and my lack of this coming fundamental had led to a lingering wrist injury, okay? So yeah, I had a great swing path, but dude, that wrist injury sucked. And without this fundamental, you will not be able to maximize the natural elasticity of your muscles. So what is this third element that truly unlocked my game? Quite simply, relaxation. When I let go of all the tension in my muscles and completely, completely let go of muscle activation, I finally started hitting powerful shots without even trying like there was no tomorrow. And let me tell you, it was an incredible feeling and it was an absolutely shocker and the best part was my wrist injury immediately went away and has ceased to come back even though my shots look the exact same at contact so that's why i said it's an absolute shocker right so by getting super relaxed and letting go of all muscle activation the natural stretch and elasticity of my muscles increased and the whippiness of the racket and the ability for the racket to actually do its job and compress the ball more finally became possible. So instead of accelerating, try to get relaxed, okay? So after the relaxed state, there's a critical element that most people don't remember that is holding them back from the extra 50% more power they've been given the opportunity to use. I'm gonna go into more depth on a, with this in a future video, but for now, just remember, how I told you that the muscle could contract 50% harder after initially being stretched. 
Well, if you don't contract the muscle, then how are you going to get that extra 50% power, <laughs> right? So that's not really, it's very important to pay attention to that. And this is a piece of the puzzle I see many people miss when they go extremist mode on being ultra relaxed and doing an elastic based swing. Sure, stay super relaxed in a practice session just like Federer, okay? I do it all the time and it's really an enjoyable hit. But when it's game time, just remember you'll want to contract the right muscles at the right time to get maximum power output from this swing type, okay? Now, what techniques can help you stay relaxed during matches? Well, one thing that I like to tell myself is to actively release all my facial muscles. And that can actually help you release tension throughout your entire body. And you'll often hear that we hold a lot of tension in our face. And what you're going to notice is if you look up a lot of the great athletes, whether it's Kobe, Federer, Sangha, their face is very relaxed at the point of contact, okay? Will being too relaxed destroy my accuracy and cause me to hit more errors? Well, if you're too relaxed without a sense of direction, you are definitely going to miss a lot. And that's why being relaxed, but having a sense of direction, right, with the correct swing path, you know, the first fundamental that we discussed earlier, is so important. So important to achieving the consistency you need to play great tennis. Now, the good news is you now know how to get more consistency with the right swing path more power by using your muscles more effectively and through their natural elasticity and more versatility while playing more effortlessly and relaxed with your body. But the bad news is all of what I've told you is useless unless you know what to start improving first. So I want you to watch the next video here to learn the first fundamental in more depth by learning how to get the correct swing path, a drill to practice it and be able to do it not just in practice, but also match point on every single shot.